this spot right here is very special in my life. Right below me, there's a sandbar. Problem is, there hasn't been a tide low enough for the past two weeks for me to reveal it to you and to show you, kind of set the scene better for that moment in my life. It was a huge decision. The decision had to be made. The decision had already been made. And I got uh, a girl named Stephanie to come out here. I asked her best friend to bring her out here. And then I paddled up, um, but not on a paddle like this. Actually, I did no paddling whatsoever. The boat did most of the paddling, but a boat came up and I was on it and I was in a Santa Claus suit. It was Christmas. And we pulled up right here where the sandbar was. And I got out and Stephanie didn't know I was here. And so she saw Santa and then I pulled down the beard and she saw it was me. And so she met me down here and right here in this spot is where I proposed to Stephanie Marquez, who is now my wife, Stephanie Rose. And there was so much that was involved in that decision making because it was a big decision. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you have a humongous decision and it's so large that you realize you don't have the wisdom, the experience, the understanding to really make that decision. We make decisions all day long for the smallest things to the largest and in our lifetime, there are some that are gonna change the course of not only our life, but the lives of others. So when it comes down to it, to make a decision can't be based on feelings. It's a decision. Marriage is a choice. It's not a feeling. And it's the same way with following Jesus. We've been going through this series on follow, and this is the last message in that series. And throughout, we've talked about the significance of what it looks like to follow Jesus, but it's a big decision. Like, you should really think through this. Maybe you've already made that decision, but you're not, you're not where you decided to be. It's all through scripture, but I want to focus on one place. One place is just a powerful example of this decision-making process. And it's Jesus, and it's one of those doozy moments where he makes a decision to speak to this group, and he, he gets pretty graphic, and it's confusing. He says, uh, if you're going to follow me, you need to eat my body and drink my blood. I don't know about you, but I'm walking away right then. If I have no context, if I don't know where this is coming from, if I don't know this guy, and I walk down the street and I hear somebody saying that, cuckoo, I'm out. But he's surrounded by followers, not just his 12 disciples, but all these followers are there. And so he says this, and of course, even though some of them have known him and walked with him for a while, it says here that as a result of this, what Jesus has said, many of his followers withdrew and they were not walking with him anymore so they just straight walk away and Jesus says to his 12 to his apprentices to his students to his disciples the ones that he's that are apostles called to be sent out do you want to go away also because they were thinking it you know they were thinking it you know Peter was thinking it that guy's always thinking of the next thing. And when I think of what ha is happening here, and especially the words that are being used, do you want to go away? They withdrew, which means some of them turned and just went in a completely different direction. Some of them later on just drifted away. And Jesus is asking directly, is this the choice you want to make or do you want to make another choice? Because just like in marriage, to not decide is to decide. You can even be right there, but you haven't decided to be there. And when I think of that word drifting, it makes me think of when you go surfing. So my son and I were out surfing uh, at a spot called Church. I'm not making that up. Because on the beach, there was a church that used to meet on the beach, and so they have a cross set up there. And when you're out 
in the ocean and you're surfing, there are certain spots you want to be at. And there's some that are way better than others. And this is an amazing spot. So we wanted to stay right there. But my son, there was a lull, waves weren't coming in as much as he'd like, and so he wanted to leave. He wasn't getting that immediate gratification. And so he gave up on the spot. And he decided, you know what? I'm gonna paddle over there. So he paddled away. That's what it means in the first verse in, in when it says they withdrew. Some of them just turned around and paddled away. But what happens later as we see people following Jesus, some will just drift away. Just like when I was out surfing, I wanted to stay in that spot. But if I don't pay attention, the current's gonna come through and it's gonna start pushing. And I can sit there in the ocean, have no idea, and I'm moving either north or south. Where we're at, it was gonna push me actually north. And it would push me out of the spot that I wanted to be in. And so in the same way in following Jesus, you can drift. Of course you can be tempted by other places, other things that might be better. But if you don't make the decision to constantly reposition yourself, you're gonna be away from him. You are following him and next thing you know, you're not because you, the currents of life. I mean, life is an ocean. And there's so many things happening. There's wind, there's current, there's so much happening that will push you where you don't really wanna be. And so we see here that Peter is asked the question, well, are you going to go too? And I love his response. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Again, it's all about the options. Considering the options simplifies things. And so Peter is asked that question, do you want to go somewhere else? He's like, where else am I going to go? Not because he doesn't have other options, but because he realized this is where he wants to be. He's seen enough, he knows enough, this is where he wants to be. And so to stay there, he's right in the moment where he's feeling the current trying to push him away, the current of what everybody else is doing. And so he has to consciously make the decision to stay there. So for some of you, you have to make the decision, like Peter, am I where I wanna be? because I want to be next to him, but maybe you've drifted, maybe you've been pushed aside. But some of you, and I know this is the case, you really have never made that decision. You've never made the decision to follow him. Maybe you have friends that haven't made that decision. This is a ginormous decision. When it comes to big decisions, you've got to really wrestle with it. And so I want to go back to what brought me to this spot so many years ago. In case you're wondering, it was 25 years ago that I proposed well, actually, that I got married from that proposal right here. But it wasn't the proposal. It was the decision that went before that. And, of course, Stephanie has her own process in this decision-making process. She had an idea it would come, and she had to decide, am I going to say yes? Do I want to deal with this guy? But in that process, I realized, I, God, I don't know. How. I've seen so many broken marriages. I've seen so many people that can't make this work. What makes me think I can do this? What makes me think, is this the right person? Am I the right person for her? Should we be doing this? And so in that decision-making process, it's much like following Jesus. There's a few things you do. One of the things you can do is do the list of the pros and the cons. You've done it before, right? Where you make up a list. So I did that, but that wasn't good enough. I was still kind of torn, but sometimes it works perfect. Um, then it's debating the value, the risk. I mean, you know, what you're doing when you decide to propose, you know, but there's also a risk involved because there's other options. I could have not married her. I'm, I, I'm not one that believes that there's just one person for you. I could be wrong, I could be right. But in that decision-making process, I was like, there may be someone else. Is this, I have limited experience here. I'm 25 years old. I started asking other people when it comes to following Jesus, it's kind of probably a wise decision to ask other people to make sure you're not doing something rash. Think it through. If it's, a, if it's an important decision, you want as much input as you can get. So in following Jesus, this shouldn't be an emotional decision. But then sometimes God just has to step in because he knows you don't have the horsepower. You don't have the wisdom and so at that moment when I was wrestling with it, I'd done all those things and God's quiet voice spoke to me. 
And he said, if you don't propose, will you regret it the rest of your life? Considering the options clarifies the decision. And immediately, I knew that I was going to ask her to marry me because I knew I would regret not making that decision for the rest of my life. I'd seen it with other friends. And I'm so fortunate that God decided to step in. He doesn't always step in with his decisions. Sometimes a lot of your decisions, it's love God and love others. What's the best decision for loving God and loving others? I tell people all the time who are wrestling with decisions. The decision isn't nearly as important as the relationship, your relationship with God. He'll get you to where he wants you. You just have to stay close to him. So again, we come back to the, the, the original question. What's your decision? And maybe another way to look at it is kind of how God spoke to me in proposing a step. Will you have any regrets if you don't make this decision? So I'll close with this. There was a a book that I read when I was much younger after Steph and I were married and it was by a guy named Sheldon Vonnegan the, the book is called uh, A Severe Mercy and in it he has this beautiful relationship uh, with a girl named Davy and they get married and in this marriage they they have not made the decision to follow Jesus but they make friends uh, with one of the professors, C.S. Lewis. And so they're writing letters back and forth and they're discussing and they're talking. So Sheldon is looking back at his life and he's looking at it without Jesus. And he has this kind of this situation where he realizes, you know what, I, I don't believe, but I'm looking back and behind me it's crumbling because my belief system that I had before I don't feel confident walking away. I don't feel confident paddling away from Jesus. And so, but if I go this way, this is, this is scary. But it's not nearly as scary as walking without him. He knew that he would have regrets because he had more confidence in following Jesus than he, than he did not. Even as I follow Jesus today, there's going to be doubts. That's normal. In fact, if you don't have any doubts, you should be a little concerned. But he looks and he sees these doubts, but much fewer doubts following Jesus. And so he, he, he has this beautiful poem that I want to share with you. He says, between the probable and proved, there yawns a gap. Afraid to jump, we stand absurd. Then see behind us sink the ground. And worse, our very standpoint is crumbling. Desperate dawns, our only hope to leap into the word that opens up the shuttered universe. The reason I even do these messages, the reason I even talk, I've chosen this vocation, is because I want people to know that it's the best decision you can make. You can't just go on my word, you have to, this is a big decision but I haven't regretted it one time in my life. Just like with my marriage with Steph, one of the best decisions I ever made. It's difficult, it's not easy, but it's beautiful. And as Sheldon Vonnegut says, it opens up the shuttered universe. God bless.